Hey guys, it's your girl Aisha, aka Geek XX Chic, and I am back with another reaction to The Runaways. We are on season one, episode seven. Finally, caught, catching up, finally catching up. Uh, this episode is called Refraction. And um, yeah, that can mean, once again, uh, the terms in this, uh, this show, the, the titles I give to these episodes are always ones that can be applied in broad ways. So Refraction really kind of refers to the diffusion of either light or sound or something along those lines being um, bounced off of or fused through another medium. So um, again, we already know that we've talked about, you know, what happens in the Chamber of Secrets. It could be referring to that. It could be referring to just after effects of the things that are going on. There's just a lot of things it could it could possibly um, be alluding to. So I have no doubt that this episode is going to be full of all kinds of goodies just like all the episodes before it have. Um, as far as a recap for the last episode, I'd say the biggest things that we learned are that, um, well, the adults basically had the most drama happen in the sense of Victor admitting that he knew about the affair going on between his wife and Robert Monero, but then also the, uh, the reveal of the fact that he has cancer to the pride. Then Jonah provided a glowy fluid, which I can only assume is something ext extracted from himself. And um, that apparently is going to cure his cancer. Um, but we saw that um, Daddy York's actually grabbed the vial. I mean, I don't think Jonah was trying to hide it, but he grabbed that vial, stuck it in his pocket. I can only think that he's going to analyze it and potentially figure out the secret behind what the deans are, because I don't think he knows. I don't think anyone in the Pride realizes that uh, Leslie and uh, Jonah, and by extension, Carolina, are not human. And then as far as the kids' drama, the biggest things, obviously, Carolina learning that she can fly. And probably the big, big drop is that Molly, unfortunately, succumbed to the fear of um, not being able to learn about her parents. And she ended up letting it slip that she indeed did see something. Without further ado, let's get into this episode and then we'll have a little chat about it afterwards. Okay? Boop. Time travel is not about going back and forth. It's about staying right where we are, about positioning ourselves so that we remain in the presence of beauty. Look at Victor with his slick lines. Victor, stop. Two babies young, was he supposed to do that? <laughs> I love how the man's genius has no idea how babies work. It's so cute. Wired's visionary. Give me a break. Stop. You don't know shit about shit. Holy crap! Say it again. Jesus! You don't know shit about. Time machine's talking. Don't pick up the Fistagons, future Chase. My mind's blown, y'all. My mind is blown. This it, this episode just got super interesting. It was a shock to us. You can only imagine what it was like for her. Yeah. yeah. I think you know your parents. You guys Damn. Anything? If you have anything you want to fill us in on before this evening, feel free. I'm a genius. A Everything is fine. You guys want to tell them? Right. We're good. good. Definitely. Mm. Truth goes both ways. I look forward to speaking with him this evening and thanking him for his inspiration. Wait, you're going to the open house? Wouldn't miss it for the world. <laughs> Why are oh, these kids so shocked at time. parental involvement? Yes. Then I mean, say, crazy daddy. <laughs> Pop, when's the last time you showered? You... Chase. Oh, love you. <laughs> yeah. What's mm. this evening? You're like in love with Janet Stein. I mean, come on. Poor Robert on that island of love all by himself. Oh my God. He's ready to see the spectrum. <laughs> AKA pull the plug. Just keep it simple. Jeez. He's not human either. What's I am shocked. You've been I doing am something we all want. Shook. That family. 
tells everybody that you're some kind of healer. No, I'm counting on it. Interesting. Why would Jonah do this? I guess to keep him distracted. Planning a big double date. What do the kids do for fun these days? Is it a uh, escape room? Karaoke? Jeez, what what flavor are you, is a date. are you right now, Dirk? Salty? Forget it. If after all we've been through, this is how it's going to be, then I don't want anything to do with you guys. Molly, hold on. You do know she could, like, break all of you in half, right? You might want to not get on her nerves. And if Jonah ever finds out that you pinched his serum... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think Jonah knows. It to me. It's like he wanted us to examine it, okay? Exactly. But, yes, no, it's like a crazy malware in a computer virus. It spreads like a bell creme from the south of France. It spreads. Uh, yeah. So maybe Victor is not going to be Victor anymore. Oh, maybe so like some little hive-minded <laughs> soldier. Whoa, I didn't realize we had plans. Where have you been? Ooh. She's oh, back in wife story? mode. You have authority because I gave it to you. <laughs> Here it comes. You want to save church. that crusty old ass. And it's my religion. The church is in the past, Leslie. You don't want to be around when it goes down. What? New information. This is what happens when you bang the boss. You don't get the details. Nothing's wrong. Talk about digmatized. This girl does not see that she's getting manipulated, like, literally to her face. I kind of didn't finish my audition. Right, you were the one menstruating during her routine. Hmm. What can I say? I'm wow. all about that Wow, way to shame a natural thing. I was wondering, you know, we have a spot for you. Really? Towel girl. Team manager. Oh my God, thank you no, so much. No, it's a like, trap. I'm going to be working on routines, designing uniforms. Um, I have a lot of thoughts on athleisure trends. Yeah, it's actually more like washing towels and filling up water bottles, but um, you're cool with that. Water boy. Right? It's right on our fingertips. <laughs> Jesus, Dale, this is why you so need to... So this stuff's like, it is Imagine like... Imagine the ability crack. to live I think I said this in the last episode. It's crack. It's that was the greatest kiss I've ever experienced. It was like this, this, this explosion of color He's in my mouth. He's so high. Uh, you're scratching adorable voice, your shoes... I mean Crocs. What are Crocs? Crocs are a gift from God, don't you think? That's <laughs> wrong. Mr. Dean? Is something wrong? So many things. So many things wrong. Real. <laughs> totally crashing. I love it. <laughs> I want to do personally thank each and every one of my son's instructors. It helped mold him into a fine young man. We welcome input from all our parents. <laughs> Jesus, now, like, oh my God, kill me. To your first classroom. Hey, at least it's happy vibes. Imagine if he was like taking his clothes off and singing on tables, right? So, these are your people now. Oh, shut up, girl. Michael appreciates me. Maria? Both of us know how to stay focused on the big picture. Both of us are heartless cows. It's all about the forest. And it's over. You'll tell him that. Unless you'd like to. Maybe you should make her since she's so damn meddlesome. Go, girl. Come on, Robert. If you're gonna bang yes. a man's wife, you should at least have the balls to look him in the eye. They did this. Exactly. They need to be held accountable for their actions. Isn't that what they teach teenagers all the time? On Monday, you were going to make a public apology to my son and reinstate him to the lacrosse team. Do we have a deal? Sure, sure. Thank you. <coughs> but Chase quit. Oh. Hmm. Side effects. It's brilliant with parents. You have to explain <laughs> Right? To These crazy rich people. Confirming things that he'd been thinking about his entire life. What Could thing? you be more vague, please? What's maybe I was or I am ashamed of lies and slander. Ashamed. You didn't look like you were ashamed when you were riding that glow bike. Goodbye, Robert. Oh, dumped like yesterday's trash. Uh. 
You're so naive, Rob. So naive. She's so excited to have you come very stay. Excited. Yeah. She was she was very close with, with your birth parents. Then why haven't I never heard of her? Exactly. Why are you guys doing this? You're giving me away? No, we all saw. See, that's up to the Wilders. It's okay, it's okay. We're gonna get you. Just go kill the Wilders! You can't use your problem problem solved. Right Sorry, I didn't think it was a problem. I mean, we've been working together. This is I feel like things wow. are gonna get real bad real quick. But you know what? I'm done now. What? It would have been better if you just... Yeah, he's not a little baby no more. Dad, don't. Damn, he's gonna kill me. Wow. Please don't. Please. Woo! That was mama, wasn't it? Nice shoes. Yeah, Mama was ready for this moment. Okay. Mama doesn't even look like she's even upset. She's like been dying to do that shit. Woo, man, what a note to end on. Uh, uh, uh. Guess we all knew that was gonna be a, a short roller coaster ride on Happy Town, right? Well, guys, that was episode seven, which was called Refraction. And uh, things are definitely starting to get escalated in this little group, both the parents and the kids. And I love it. I love it. I am very eager to see where we are headed with all of this chaos that has ensued. Um, yeah, let's just jump right into some of the highlights of the episode. Um, it's interesting that we got the flashback with Victor and, um, oh gosh, I forgot his wife's name, Janet. And seeing that, you know, Victor was, I mean, I think we already kind of, at least I did, anticipated that he was already a brilliant mind, probably a little bit of a snob, you know. As I said, people who are very, very smart and, and intellectual and cerebral tend to be a little less uh, proficient when it comes to human interaction and emotion. And I think there's no difference here with Victor, but he did seem to be a bit of a romantic and it was nice to see that Janet was also a very smart woman at one point. Well, she still is smart. I mean, sorry, let me, let me rewind that. That didn't sound right. It's nice to see that Janet had more ambitions uh, outside of, you know, her home and being like a wife and, and a mom at one point. And it looks like she could have actually been a pioneer in the engineering space, but you know, she, she obviously got married. She had Chase and then I guess Victor was making enough money and doing enough for, you know, for her maybe to just take a back seat and, and so, so it went, but it's just interesting to wonder because you see this moment where Chase is born and Victor is holding him and he seems like he's in that space that a lot of dads are when they first meet their children and there's a lot of love and compassion and, you know, a whole new world of, of, you know, just of life that you're going to be exploring as a father. but. How quickly, like we saw the next fast forward, Chase was maybe what, 10, 11, 12 years old, and that had already faded away. And Victor was to a point where he was punching his own son in the head. Like, that kind of stuff just blows my mind. I have no idea. Like, I know kids can drive you nuts, but I just, it's, I, I cannot even fathom how somebody can be so, uh, like, how can you even hurt their own child that way? Like, it blows my mind. And it's sad to see that somewhere along, from from that romantic we saw in, in in college to the the man who ended up hitting his son and hitting his wife like where does that happen was it always there you know I, I don't think so i don't know i mean we haven't really gotten an indication of whether or not the abuse started after he started his empire or if it was something that had always been there but it is sad to see that victor had the potential to actually be a pretty amazing father and husband but just Somewhere along the way that got tossed aside, but yeah, that was just kind of an interesting character development that we learned there with Victor. And of course, just that kind of dovetails into his whole reaction to having uh, Jonah's DNA injected into him. I thought that perhaps, like, I didn't know what the effects were going to be. I mean, clearly I thought that the, you know, obviously his his cheery attitude straight out of the, the gate was definitely somewhat of a side effect, but... I was thinking it was more because the tumor was gone and maybe the tumor was affecting his, you know, that was what was affecting his moods, etc. But 
it was a high. We discovered via um, the, the Yorks, well, Papa Yorks, that it's really that whatever is in Jonah's DNA, it initially basically creates a high. And everything's awesome, everything's great, you have all this energy, you've got all these, this, you know, mental capacity, but then just as high as it brings you, it has you crash twice as hard. And we saw that with Papa York's, he just had a drop, one drop of that on his, and his, on his dermis, like it wasn't even, it wasn't even internal, it was on his dermis, and it got absorbed, and he got high within a matter of seconds, and the energy boost, and then the crash, right? He was practically ready to be, to be barreled away. He was so, uh, real barreled away, sorry, but like it's, it, that's how crazy it was with one drop. So Victor got like a super infusion of that. And that's why he had that, you know, it lasted, it looks like a few days of the high and the, and the happiness, but we saw through Papa York's that it was temporary and that the downside of it was going to be real bad. And unfortunately we saw that Chase just about paid the price for that negative uh, downturn. So it does make me wonder, I guess, I don't know if Jonah re realizes that his DNA has this effect on people or if he generally cares. Uh, he doesn't seem to have a lot of respect for humanity. I think he just wants to use them and he's made that abundantly clear. I think Leslie is starting to pick up on the fact that Jonah really doesn't care about people, but I mean, I really don't feel sorry for Leslie. Uh, she's just a little too cold hearted. <laughs> And I mean, I know the show has tried very hard to make her more empathetic with, you know, oh, she shed a little tear over killing Destiny and she, you know, said, oh, it bothers me that I do this. But I don't believe that. I think that any conscience she had about all this went away a long time ago. She really just wants to keep on Jonah's good side. She really wants to have keep having glow sex, I guess. And I'm wondering if she is human, because basically the story that she told uh, Frank about how... Um, Jonah came to him and showed her father certain things and then, you know, obviously Jonah's known her since she was a child, which honestly makes their relationship even creepier. Ugh. But yeah, that this whole thing happened. So I, I, it makes me wonder, maybe she is human, but obviously being with... I The, the glowing part of it, because that's the part that, I mean, it's creepy. It's creepy, let's just say it. The glow sex is weird, but clearly if it's anything like his blood, I'm trying not to get too graphic here, but I think there's a bit of a high. Uh, Leslie might actually be literally addicted um, <laughs> to Jonah. And not because she necessarily loves him, but just because maybe whatever she, whatever side benefit she is getting from that is what she can't quite shake, uh, much like an addict. And I am very interested in how he was able to give this power of healing or temporary healing to to Frank and why he did it. You know, I'm still a little bit curious as to why. I mean, I do think it was a source of distraction since Frank was, you know, he thinks of Frank as kind of a roadblock to him getting Leslie whenever he wants and probably a little bit of jealousy over the relationship that he has with, uh, with Carolina. But I'm very curious as to why he did this. I mean, I don't know if it's a permanent fix, if he just, they call it the gloves of healing. So I don't know if he actually did something to Frank or gave Frank something to put on, but it's just an interesting development. I kind of have to maybe renege a little bit on my theory from last time about how Frank might become an ally of the kids. It looks like he's kind of, he got, you know, he's he's seen this, the sparkly lights of, of Jonah now. And even though he now knows that his vision slash memories are real about seeing Jonah and his wife together, I don't think it's going to be enough of him for him to just, you know, not want to expose Jonah or expose what he is to everybody else. So it's, you know, he's got, he doesn't have his acting anymore. And it seems like he really wants to be part of something. And I feel like I would not be surprised if maybe towards the end of this season, they try to pull him into pride in some way. But I also had a theory about Jonah's essence, I guess. And I'm wondering perhaps is because like, again, you know, the, the Yorks has brought up the fact that the fact that he left that vial with them was not an accident. You know, he gave it to Papa Yorks. I remember that he literally handed it to him. Uh, he didn't like he could easily put it back into his case, but he wanted him to have it. He wanted him to analyze it. And he probably wanted him to experiment with it along with the other Pride members. And I think, again, he knew that Papa Yorks isn't it. He's a bioengineer. Of course, he's going to be curious about it and study it. But I think feel like maybe Jonah's DNA can cause people to kind of get into almost a hive mentality. Maybe he's hoping that they'll get addicted maybe to it. 
Um, you know, he, he mentioned several times through this episode that he wants Pride under control. He wants them to be basically in line, ready to do whatever he wants at his beck and call. And I think he's hoping maybe that that essence might become a way to basically turn them into almost a hive mind and just do whatever he wants and not worry about their actual lives outside of Pride. So we'll see if there's any merit to my theory, but I feel like that might be a thing. The whole Molly situation, I, my heart goes out to Molly so much. I mentioned in the last episode that she's been overlooked and kind of shoved into a corner for the majority of the, of the series so far. And it's, it's sad and that's what happens, right? These are teenagers, she's the youngest out of the group. But with, like I said, with everything that Molly is going through, she needed a friend, she needed her sister. And she's just been kind of pushed to the wayside. So unfortunately it did leave her wide open to admit that she had seen something. And I guess in one way, it's, it's nice that the Wilders didn't attempt again to try to get the serum, because that's what they tried the first time with the serum. But it is super sad that they're going to be trying to send Molly away. Sounds like they're going to send her to the Yucatan, which is where her family had the land, and basically keep her out there indefinitely, um, away from everything she's ever known. And I get where the Yorkses are coming from, because they know that if the alternative is that if Leslie finds out, in which case she will tell uh, Jonah, from the sounds of things, Jonah has no real... He doesn't care about these people. And this is the, that's the part that's so pathetic about Pride is that they know on some level that Jonah could care less about their actual lives, but they're still doing this because they're afraid of going to jail. Like, even if you go to jail, at least you wouldn't be someone's slave for all intents and purposes to do horrible things. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, maybe it's just me, but I would risk, you know, maybe I have to go to jail, but I get three meals a day and a roof over my head and, oh yeah, I'm not your stupid mindless slave. And that's not the way they're thinking about this. They're endangering themselves and endangering their children by extension by continuing to do Jonah's call, you know, beck and call. And in any situation that's like this, the truth is what will set you free. It just saddens me that these guys are so scared that now the Yorks are going to send Molly away, which again, you know, I, I, it just was heartbreaking because when you think about it, Molly feels like she's been abandoned because, you know, her parents died. She was kind of just pulled into this family. She's kind of reminded, you know, even Gert mentioned it in the first episode or the second episode that she's not their blood. You know, she kind of knows she doesn't really fit in this family. And then now you're saying you're sending her away again. It makes her feel like, especially after feeling this entire series, like she's been on the outside or been ignored, sending her away is basically confirmation that she's not wanted or, um, not cared for and that's horrible it's 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 terrible but i have a feeling we're not going to lose molly i'd be surprised if they sent her away but i don't think we're going to lose her i would not be surprised if something happens between molly getting to the airport or something that causes her to stick around but i'd be sad to lose her even though we haven't seen a lot of her this season i'd be really sad if we you know lost molly i feel like there's a lot of potential in her character that hasn't even begun to be explored but again that could be something that they're saving for season two so Still trying to figure out what's going on with Alex and whatever it is that he knows because this is probably feeding into and again I did my research about the the characters in the comic in the comic Alex had actually been on to his parents for some time he'd been spying on the parents for some time so this might be lending itself to the comic version of Alex where potentially he's been spying on the Manuros as well as all of Pride for a lot longer than what we've seen in this show. I mean, he definitely made it seem like Alex, you know, came to this revelation along with the other kids, but maybe he's just a really good actor and he's actually been onto them for some time and just needed the help in order to further the investigation in the way that he wanted. Yeah, it's uh, it's gonna be interesting. The stakes are getting high all around. You know, the, the families, the, the parents are having a hard time. Things are kind of falling apart at that level. I feel like something drastic is gonna happen to either try to pull them in line or try to pull them apart. We'll see what happens. And whether or not these kids actually get to the expose and where it's gonna go, because we're at a point now, and especially after what happened to Chase, I think all the kids are on board with getting their parents exposed, but what will the implications of that be if they ever get to that point? I don't think we're gonna get there in this season, but if we do, the aftermath could be quite interesting. What did you guys think of this episode? Where do you guys think we're gonna end up? And do you think that that encryption is going to be, what that video encryption is gonna be 
exposed? Do you think we're actually gonna see the Paris get exposed this season? Please leave your comments below. You know I love to read them. And if you like this video, guys, I'd really love it if you click that like button. If you wanna see more from this geeky vase, please click subscribe. Until next time, see ya.